Okay. So social context is, it's very similar to author context and historical context. Um, you just look for different things. So when we're talking about social context, what we're looking for is, hi, Louisa. So um, when we talk about social context, we're looking at the social issues that were happening at the time of the writing or the time that the writing takes place in. So we want to ask ourselves some questions. What was happening in society at the time it was written? And do I see the effects of that in the writing? So we look for metaphors, symbolism, themes, et cetera. Um, for example, to go back to Godzilla that we talked about last week. Um, Godzilla was written because we dropped the atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Um, his skin looks the same as a radiation uh, poisoning victim. He is a monster who destroys uh, cities. And he was written overall as a metaphor for the atomic bomb. When we look at the American version of Godzilla, the American version is considered a protector of Earth. He's a hero. And um, he's kind of like built up to be like this knight in shining armor. And the reason for that is because of the differences in history. One, uh, one country was the victim of a bombing. The other country is the one that dropped the bombs. Does that kind of make sense? So here are some examples of works that are really good to analyze in social context. Uh, Black Panther, the Marvel movie, that's a really good one because we have these two characters. We have T'Challa, who's the Black Panther, and then we have his cousin, Eric, Killmonger. And they're kind of set up as one is like Martin Luther King Jr. and one is Malcolm X. They both have the same goal. They just have a different way of achieving that goal. And there's also the idea of isolationism. Wakanda's very isolationist. They like put on a front to the world that they're a third world country when we, in reality, they have like technology that is, you know, more advanced than even the most technologically advanced country. Um, so we have these themes of isolationism. We have these themes of, is it better to peacefully protest? Is it better to violently protest? And it all comes together to make a really engaging, like, time relevant story. Of course, you know, again, there's Godzilla. Uh, the Crucible is a play you may or may not have read it in high school. It takes place during the Salem Witch Trials, but it was written in the 1950s in response to something called the Red Scare. Um, the Red Scare was this fear of communism after World War II. And people who were accused of being communists were often blacklisted, meaning that they were kept from being able to work. And so Arthur Miller, who was blacklisted because he was accused of being a communist, wrote this play that took place in the Salem Witch Trials. But the social context is that it's about mass hysteria, and it's about lying, and it's about falsely accusing people who are innocent. And then we have a couple speeches. So this is, um, okay. I was going to ask, is this basically kind of like uh, you read about what it's about and then you uh, research their, uh, all the events that were happening at the time of yes. everything? Yes, that's exactly right. You read what it's about and then you go and you do research about what was happening so deeply at the time. And so it ties in very closely. Okay, and you can use references? Yeah, and then you use references. Um, okay. Chances are you might know a little bit about the time period. Um, today we're going to be looking at MLK's I Have a Dream Speech. And we're going to be talking about the Civil Rights Movement. Okay. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put you guys in a breakout room. And you'll go to week five in your Blackboard shell, and you'll find MLK's I Have a Dream speech. Um, you guys are going to read it. I'm going to give you time to read it. And then we're going to come back and we're going to discuss what we know about the civil rights movement and how we see that in the speech. Okay. 
Okay. Do we need to read it out loud or just uh... silently? You can read it silently. You don't have to read it out loud unless that helps you. Okay. Okay. 